Hello everybody, my name is Robin. In case you don't know who I am, uh, my name's Robin. <laughs> I'm a medical student at Swansea University and today I'm going to be talking about all the things you can do to budget for the year. So for some people, coming to university is the first time of their independence and being away from parents and being able to budget their money, which can be quite daunting. I've been a university student for four years now and every single year I still use a university budget just to be able to manage my finances a bit better and have a bit more control over it. That way I can put my mind at rest and ease thinking that, oh, I, I can pay my rent and I can pay the bills and all these kind of things and still have money to go out for dinners and s stuff like that. So today I'm gonna to be walking through how you can also do that. The first thing I would suggest to do is to download a budget sheet. Now my favorite ones to find are on Save the Student, which is a wonderful website and there's so many articles on there on how to budget money, save money, gain money, anything about money, it's, it's got it. But even if you're not going to use the student budget sheet itself, being able to download it and look at the ingoings and outgoings may make you think of things that you've not thought of before. So for example, in the outgoings, I never thought to put my mobile phone down as a monthly subscription, but it is, and I need to consider that in my budget. So that's been really handy. I'll link in the description anything that I talk about in this video, including that student budget sheet that I've used and be using and will use forever. <laughs> so firstly, you wanna be able to know your ingoings and your outgoings. So your ingoing is any money that is coming into your account. So whether that's from student finance or your parents or a scholarship or bursaries or jobs, anything like that, you wanna be able to write it down, and have a rough estimate for each month. I would suggest breaking your student budget down into monthly summaries. I know things like student finance can give you bulks of money in termly fees, so that's every three months or so, but it's so much easier to see everything down, well, broken down as a monthly budget. Next, you've got your outgoings. <laughs> Similarly, your rent might be going out by a termly budget, but being able to break it down into a monthly budget is so much easier to visualize. Now one of the things that I struggled with my budgeting was my groceries and this is because of several different reasons. So first of all, I didn't actually know how much I would spend on food because I've never been able to buy just food for myself for that whole month. Secondly, everything that I was buying on a weekly basis kind of altered every week. So if I ran out of all of my dry goods, all my rice, my beans, my cereals, I would have to go out and buy all these dry products which then added up to a lot more compared to all the freshly stuff that I was getting on a regular basis. So what I'd suggest doing for this is budget yourself some sort of money and feel where you're comfortable falling in that category. <laughs> so for example, I give myself a 35 to 40 pound budget per week for my groceries. So that will add up to about 120 pound per month. I will give myself 120 pound from my grocery budget to spend. And then at the end of that month, I'll see if I've gone in and out. Then at the end of the year, I'll see if I've gone in and out. If you realize that you're overspending, then maybe look at what you're buying. Is it branded things that you can actually swap for something else? Now, the other things that I found difficult to budget for at the beginning of term was things like transport. So for example, in Swansea, there's a lot of transport by buses to and from the unis. And I remember my first year, I wasn't sure how much money I'd be spending on a bus fare because I didn't know how regularly I'd be getting the bus. Again, what I suggest you do is just to see how much you spend in a month and see whether you think that's sustainable or not and then go from there. So after that month, you might be like, I've taken the bus every single day. I think I need an annual pass. I'm going to buy an annual pass. So in the long term, I can actually save money. Other things that aren't subscriptions like your mobile phone, so things like eating out, buying clothes, events. I would just set aside how much you personally would like to budget. Some people love clothes shopping and they go weekly and they spend 40 pounds a week. And if you have the budget for it, then do, do budget it because it's what you like. For example, I love to eat out. I love to go to restaurants and try new foods and I do that on a regular basis. So I make sure that I include that in my budget. And again, this is all from experience. So don't be too worried if you're going into your first year of uni and you're not sure what you're gonna, but what your budget's gonna look like and how you're gonna figure it all out. Just try it, try a budget, and then if you need to readjust back in January when term two starts, do that. A big tip that I would give anybody trying to budget and see their money is to be able to put their money into different pots. 
So there are different apps that you can do this on your phone or there are different banking apps that you can also use that are able to put your money into different pots and then you can track how much you are spending from each. I find this so helpful because it just breaks everything down into smaller bite-sized chunks and you're able to actually see that money coming in and out and how much you are spending around that. Another tip, if you're really struggling and you're going over your budget over and over again because of contactless payments and Apple Pay and Google Pay and things are just so accessible nowadays, that if you are struggling and you do feel like you're overpaying, then take out some cash. It might seem old school, but actually taking out that cash and having that physical money and being able to pay it by your hand and seeing that money go and come and being able to budget out in your coins is really handy. Sometimes physically having that money makes that difference. So if that helps you, and if you do find you are going over budget, then do it by all means. Finally, I would say another big budgeting tip is to be able to put some money aside for yourself. So although you're putting a lot of money towards things like health subscriptions and groceries and rent and bills and maybe eating out a few times or buying clothes a few times, that's fantastic. But you also want to be able to put aside some money to treat yourself. So if you know your birthday's coming up and even though your friends and family are going to treat you, you also want to treat yourself. Just be able to put away a hundred pounds or two hundred pounds or how much money you think that you might want or need. Put that in a little savings pot. And then when that big thing comes up where you're like, oh, I want to go on this trip, or actually I want to go eat here, or I want to buy this really nice thing for you, you know you have that money aside so you can do so. And then if you don't end up spending it, then you can just save it for next year, which is amazing. It means that you give yourself that freedom to not just be on a really tight budget all the time, but you know that you have that money just so you can be like, yeah, I can go on that trip, or yeah, I can spend this night out with my friends because I have that freedom and I've been able to pay my rent at the same time. Amazing. Anyway guys, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment down below and subscribe to the student vlogs hashtag Swansea Uni YouTube channel for more tips and tricks like this. And if you are coming to Swansea in September, good luck with everything. I can't wait to see you here. There's so much to do and you can see what to do on our student vlogs channel. Bye guys.